Here we're going to look at the controversial topic of designer babies. Another question probably right now in your mind is, is that a picture of me? And I'll get right to it now. The answer is no, that is not a picture of me. Had a, tried to find a cute baby. You don't want a picture of me on the title slide. All right, so starting with what is a designer baby? Well, it's a baby whose genetic makeup has been artificially selected for through the process of genetic engineering. The real question comes in is, should couples be given the right to alter their children's genes based on their own preferences and or likings? So should we allow parents to be able to modify or pick, for example, here you see, maybe the eye color of their unborn baby? So a real life situation related to designer babies is uh, Adam Nash was one of the world's first designer babies. And the reason why this one is an important case, and this occurred back in 2000, is that um, through the process of the parents having certain genetic disorders, this child was born through the process of what we would term now designer babies to select for an individual that didn't have the complications that were present as carriers in both of the parents. So combination in vitro fertilization, where the egg is fertilized with sperm from outside the womb, embryos are grown to the eight cell stage and are checked for genetic disorders at that point. It's a major treatment in infertility. It's now being used for other reasons. The only healthy embryo was transplanted into the mother's womb. So we kind of grew up, they grew up some cells and they only selected the ones that were a healthy individual to avoid some complications or disorders. Again, tied in with that real life situation, these parents are both car carriers for a gene mutation that led to their first daughter, Molly, being born with a rare and devastating genetic disorder of anemia. Uh, however, the, for her, what she had to go through was her bone, a bone marrow transplant, and she is now healthy and given a second chance of life. So red blood cells come from marrow. That's where the genetic disorder was through the process of a marrow transplant, which is a very difficult and painful and trying process. Uh, Molly was given a new chance there on life. But the designer baby, again, going back here, um, Adam, had, through the process of genetic engineering, did not have to go through that process to simply having the genes modified, avoided the entire anemia from occurring in the first place. So doctors fertilized several of Adam's mother's eggs, but only uh, implanted one that was genetically healthy. They selected for that one that did not carry those genetic disorders. However, now we're looking at designer babies today. To date, genetic technology has only been used to treat serious diseases in children. But the possibility to alter anything from gender to disease and eventually appearance, personality, even IQ, is a possibility. So I just call it a slippery slope here. Some believe that parents will kind of eventually use this to choose their own children's genes and push for the creation of these designer babies, selecting for what they want their um, unborn child to look like, what they want personality, or what they want, and so on and so forth. So the advantages of designer babies, there's some, again, there's some real pros to this. Allows couples that, who can't conceive normally to have children. A genetic screening reduces babies' chances of being born with serious genetic diseases, increases the likelihood of a healthy baby, allows couple, couples to balance gender in their families. If some families have a lot of males or a lot of females, they can balance that. They can choose male or females. The fear is, though, um, they may be selecting for vision, um, for high IQ, um, for no baldness, for perfect pitch, and so on, and other traits. If you also notice the letters this baby is playing with might give you some indication of how that connects to designer babies and DNA is my hint. So designer babies disadvantages. Uh, is it moral or ethical? Uh, too much playing like God. Or their embryos would be killed, selected against. Oh, that didn't turn out right. They could have been turned into humans. They'll be killed. There's social concerns. High cost leads to gaps in society, could lead to eugenics, the breeding of individuals that are bred or designed to build social preferences. Genetically enhanced people may start to feel superior to those who have not been genetically altered, leading to selection for um, different social worth feelings. So there could be implications just beyond sequences of DNA. Uh, I found some interesting um, graphs and some comparisons here. I invite you to pause the video at any time so you can look at these. I think they're pretty interesting. I'm just going to read some of the titles and want you to take a look at them. 
So genetic design, what do parents want to alter the most? Uh, the standpoint is alterations ethical or unethical? What do parents want to alter the most? You see some um, traits here. Another one, another comparison, how do women and men, or how would women and men design a baby's personality? So this is what the men, I'm sorry, the women we want, this is what the men would want. You see the percentages are pretty close on some things and then a little different on others. Also, how would women and men design their baby? So here's a little comparison of health and weight and attractiveness, um, hair color, what color would they want? Again, for women, that would be designing a baby versus men. Interesting to see the gender differences between the two there. Um, also, uh, how Europeans and Americans would design a baby's personality. So a baby made in Europe and a baby made in America, um, looking at some of the same traits as the one before for male to female, and how European Americans would design a baby, again, based on some of those same traits, eye hair color, eye color, and so on and so forth. Again, just an interesting comparison, um, just food for thought. Again, this is just all theoretical, but just gives you an idea that there are differences between males and females and also uh, different regions of the world. So for against designer babies, what would you choose and why? How do you support the idea for designer babies? Would you use genetics engineering for children simply to make them more intelligent or better looking? Would you like to have a blonde haired, blue eyed girl? That would be possible. Uh, do you like the process of not knowing? Are you again? Are you for or against supporting this idea? Because it's an issue we're going to be faced with going into the future. Just some conclusions here. Looking at, after looking at some of the data, it seems immoral or unethical to test embryos for certain genes and tamper with them. Technology still developing, so safety still a little bit of a concern. Children's lives could be saved. That's again major advantage. Fewer children would be born with genetic disorders. There's many advantages and disadvantages of designing a baby, and you should keep an open mind and an unbiased attitude. Let's have the meme here. People jump into conclusions. People jump into conclusions everywhere. So just because you think initially, oh, yes, I'm for it, or no, I'm against it, look at some of uh, both sides and develop an educated decision. Another uh, possibility here, is it possible to have three parents? And the answer is yes, it actually is possible. Uh, as we know, we get the mother's egg, uh, the father's sperm, they come together and they make an individual. However, we have to remember there's DNA in the mitochondria. So technically, we could get a surrogate uh, mother or another mother's DNA for the mitochondria and put that into a cell. And technically, that individual would have the mitochondria of the other mother, the main egg in genes from uh, this mother number one, and the father's genes from number three. So yes, it's, it is possible to get um, to be born from three parents. A little crazy. Uh, Again, yeah, it shows a better, probably a better example here. Taking the mother's egg, the nucleus is removed and destroyed. We're taking, inserting it here with the donor's normal mitochondria. And then we're taking the sperm from the father to generate the individual. This could be used in situations where the mother's egg has abnormal mitochondria that could lead to genetic disorders. So taking the nucleus here removed and transferring that to the donor, that's where most of the genes are kept. Again, there's not a lot of genes in the mitochondria, but there are some. So technically, this embryo would be developed from three parents. Two mothers, because all of your uh, mitochondria come from your mother, and your father's sperm cell. So just a interesting food for thought and kind of the weird things that can occur with science when you understand all of the basics uh, behind it. And just should this be allowed, again, we're selecting against the abnormal mitochondria that will help the individual in the end. Talk about ethics, is it just because it's possible, does it mean we should do it? And that's the main question.